Uh, so, hi everyone, I'm Laura, I'm a PhD student in the Centre of Liver and Gastrointestinal Research here at Birmingham, and I just want to talk you through my public engagement activity based around liver appreciation and liver health. So, I uh, just wanted to start off with a, a favourite graph of liver, liver researchers, and this is from a Lancet report a few years ago, and essentially what it shows is that deaths from most major disease groups have gone down in the last few decades except for this bar here on the far right hand side that shows liver disease. So liver disease is on the rise in the UK and deaths from liver disease have actually gone up over 400% since 1970. So this is obviously something that's having a big impact right now. Um, but looking at a great statistic from the British Liver Trust, when asked uh, they would consider finding out they had a problem with their liver to be of great concern, only 5% of British adults said yes compared to 72% who said yes when they were asked the same question about their heart. So we can see that there's a contrast where um, we have this liver disease on the rise that's causing a big problem, but it's not reflected in people's awareness and concern about liver health. So this is uh, what I wanted to focus on for this public engagement. Um, first of all, with this statistic, um, I hoped that I could give people a uh, a bit more information about all the wonderful things that our liver does for us and um, many people associate the liver with its important job in processing alcohol but it actually has over 500 jobs within the body so the hope was that if i can show how amazing this organ is and all the things it does for us then maybe people would see why finding out they had a problem with their liver would be of concern and alongside this looking at this bar here on the right 90 percent of liver disease is actually preventable so as well as raising awareness about the importance of our liver, I wanted to tie in um, information on liver health. Because again, there is an association between uh, the liver and alcohol, but actually our diet and our fat and our sugar intake has a huge impact on our liver health as well. So um, in fact, this is actually thought to overtake alcohol potentially as the leading cause for end stage liver disease in the future. So I wanted to highlight uh, and kind of give an appreciation for our liver and how hard it works, but also to link this with the importance of being aware of our sugar intake uh, on liver health. So um, I chose families as my target audience for this. I was developing it over the course of lockdown, so I knew there are a lot of families that were at home together. And when I was researching these different kinds of public engagement, I saw some fantastic pieces of work that people had developed um, that also lent themselves to uh, being in assistance with homeschooling. So I focused on this as I thought it would um, allow me to create something that was accessible for children and young people, but also provided a lot of information for adults and parents as well. And it meant I could do it in a kind of more fun and lighthearted way because I didn't want to create an anxiety around liver disease, um, especially at the minute. So uh, this seemed like uh, the best kind of audience to do that for. Um, so the activity kind of was one thing that came in three parts of increasing amounts of interactivity. Um, so it started with uh, an animated infographic, which was a short video that kind of gave the background information about the liver and the jobs it does and introduced the idea of liver health and sugar. Um, but I didn't want it to be just giving the information. So the end of this video included uh, a short video demonstration on an experiment that people could do at home that showed you um, a link between how bile worked and, uh, and digestion. And then lastly, uh, mentioned in the video and also linked in all the posts was an interactive liver quiz. And this was um, not only a way of being able to uh, introduce more information about the liver, but it was the most important thing for me regarding being able to measure the output um, of how much people had gained from the experience uh, and the activity because I could add in questions to ask how much people had learned and what they thought was most interesting so it gave me a way of kind of assessing how much people had taken from it as well. Um, so uh, I won't show you the whole video due to time but uh, this is at least a little bit of my liver infographic so I wanted to do it this way because I particularly aiming this at children and young people. I didn't want it to be a static load of information that um, was kind of agreed. I wanted to do it this way because it also meant I could do it in a kind of fun and lighthearted way and with it being dynamic it kind of represented this hard-working uh, little organ that we've got and, and all the things it does for us. Um, and so I used Biteable as my platform for this because it meant um, it was really simple to use. I could take these few second long animations and then build and customize a video with my own text. 
Um, and as well as that, it meant I could add in uh, some videos of my own at the end, uh, which is how I kind of added this demonstration at the, uh, at the end of the video. So it wasn't just a load of information. It was, if you want to try some of this at home, is um, a way you can do it. And the idea was this was not only to give something that was, uh, was hands-on, but also to show the liver's role in, uh, in our health, kind of in the bigger picture, because by making bile, um, which here is demonstrated with washing up liquid, which is added to water and oil, it shows how we can help to absorb uh, nutrients from fat. So it shows how having a healthy functioning liver also affects other parts of our body, like the gut um, and food absorption. Um, and then lastly was the how much you know about your liver quiz. Um, and I used kind of questions for the titles of these things a lot because I wanted it to kind of prompt that question is do, does the liver do more for us than we, that we already know? Um, so I chose Typeform as my platform for this for a number of reasons. Um, I really like the aesthetic it gave for a start, uh, but also it meant that when I was building the questions, I could add a lot more information into the answers. So it wasn't just correct or, or not. I could say it's correct and here is why, or here's some more information and give it some more context like that. Um, the results uh, part of this platform was really fantastic. So I could see people's answers that came in. I could see the percentage of people that had answered different ways. So it gave me an idea of how much people knew um, and how people were answering the questions. And also I added in some questions that I had mentioned in the video. So it gave me an idea of how much people were recalling that information and um, and taking that on as well. Um, as well as this, uh, one of the important things for me was that I could include these picture rounds because not only did it break up the, uh, the quiz as it was going, but it was based off um, some face-to-face -face public engagement I've done in the past where we have something we call the sugar board. And it's essentially some wrappers from different food items and some weighed out bags of sugar. And we ask people to try and match the sugar content to the, um, the food. And it is, uh, has a fantastic shock factor and it's a really good way to um, start a conversation about how uh, much sugar is in our food, especially in healthier options that we think, what our daily sugar intake should be and how to link to liver health. Um, and I want to recreate a version of that in the quiz, which is what I've done here with the sugar cubes uh, on the scales. Um, so this was shared on social media. Uh, my uh, original plan was to kind of focus on Twitter, but I was very lucky to have a very willing group of friends and family to be a focus group throughout this. So um, they helped me to kind of adapt the language and make sure it was something that was accessible. Um, and in doing so, found out that Facebook was actually an easier platform um, for them to be able to see everything together on. Um, partly because I wasn't uh, limited by the characters in the actual post. Um, in Twitter, you're also limited by the length of the video. So I had to split the information and the demonstration as I went down as well. Whereas on Facebook, I could put it all in one and link the quiz. Um, and it worked a bit better as a unit. Um, obviously from, from Facebook we can get the metric so we can see how much people engage with it which is really nice. Um, the activity had to end by the 17th um, so it was on Facebook for just over a week and in that time we had just under 250 people who actively engaged with it so clicked on it to read more, um, watch the video etc. Um, the feedback was really positive. Uh, I saw on when it had been shared, there were brilliant comments like, why didn't I know this before? Why wasn't I taught this at school? A lot of stressed comments about how much sugar was in the things they were eating. So it had started that conversation again, which is really nice to see. Um, as well as that, it seemed to be hitting the kind of target audience that I was expecting, although there was quite a few more women, which is interesting, um, something I'd like to look into. Um, but as well as that, it I hit a lot more countries than I was expecting it to as well, which is nice to see uh, there were views from um, the United States, from India, from Portugal. So it was nice to see that from people sharing this, it had actually got quite a far reach. Um, I did put it on Twitter as well. It was there for slightly less time. Uh, I mean, I, I said I kind of adapted it so that it was fitted into a, a thread of posts, um, a, thre a thread of tweets rather instead. Um, and again, it was shared here with really positive comments uh, with a lot of people kind of without prompt saying it's not just alcohol it does more for us than this which is one of the key messages i wanted to get across so it was nice to see that that's what people were taking from it when they were sharing it um and it was shared by a number of other scientists as well which is uh, nice to see and i get on both of them thanks to some really good advice from leah there were kind of follow-up posts over the course of the week with stills from the video questions from the quiz to help prompt people to um engage with it a bit more over the time it was running 
Um, and so those metrics are really good uh, to see how much people are engaging with it. But the type form quiz is my real output for um, kind of how much people have taken away from it. Um, and by adding these two questions in at the end, so did you learn anything new about your liver? And then an option where people could free type at the end as to what they thought was most interesting and give feedback. Um, that was the best way I really got to see how much people had taken out of it. Uh, so I'll show you the results of that in a second. Um, but this is just an example of the kind of answer that I could see on type form with the number of people that had answered a question in different ways. And it's interesting to see that we saw the same patterns in people's association with sugar uh, on the quiz as I'd seen um, in the face-to-face -face engagement as well. And based on the feedback that people had typed, it also had that same shock factor. Uh, one particular favourite of mine is that people horribly underestimate the threat of a bag of chocolate raisins. So actually only uh, a quarter of people got this right that in a 200 gram bag of chocolate raisins there is 121 grams of sugar. And this I started people talking and um, mentioned a few times in the open-ended uh, answer that this is something that they've taken away. Um, so uh, my favourite part of this was these two questions and it was really nice to see that of the 47 people that took this quiz, only two people said that they hadn't learned anything new. And uh, the majority of people said that they learned a lot more than they knew before. Um, Learn at least a little bit more and then looking at these um, kind of free type of question uh, at the end I kind of went through and saw how many times people had mentioned sugar and mentioned the number of jobs it did and things like that and seeing as the um, the link with liver health and sugar and the number of jobs I ever did were the two key messages I wanted people to take from this it was really cool to see that these were the two things that were mentioned the most often so there was a um, a lot of uh, comments about I had no idea that my liver did this and I couldn't believe how much sugar I eat in a day um, and uh, some really fantastic comments where people had said things like I can't believe how much I underappreciated my liver until now and a few people that had said I always thought I didn't need to worry because I didn't drink alcohol which is really one of the things that I wanted people to take away from this so it was really nice to see that that was the messages that were, uh, were coming across. So um, one minute Laura. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah, thank you to you as well for all of the, the mentoring and don't forget to give your liver a bit of love. <laughs> it was great. Thank you. I, I shall be treating my liver to a small glass of Sauvignon Blanc later. <laughs> yeah. Won't thank me for it though. Yeah, no. I treated yeah, mine no. to a pub garden, so. <laughs> as long as you don't have any chocolate raisins, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's that's good point. Fine. I don't have any of those in the house. No, I managed to eat all the chocolate well, well, <laughs> many months ago oh, in yeah. the of lockdown. People still bring that up to me now, months later after they've done this, they see me and they're like, chocolate raisins, the betrayal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of the point, isn't it? Um, I, I, Leah, Leah. Yes. I don't actually want Laura to finish talking. <laughs> If you want an indication, Laura, of how well that went, then that comment should encapsulate the whole lot. So I'm going to give you a round of applause. Thank you from me, because I'm truly delighted for that. I, I do have some questions. Um, I wrote some questions down, and fortunately, you answered them for me, which is kind of spoiled. <laughs> yeah. sport. The whole, in fact, you've answered all of them so far. Um, oh, yes, no, I've got one. Right. Um, it, it, it's, actually, it's actually about you. Because um, I can see clearly from all the evaluation that you've done what your audience got out of it, but you've also collected a whole bunch of uh, stuff. The one that probably piqued my interest in as much as it obviously intrigued you was why you had so many women uh, engage with the quiz on Facebook as opposed to men. What are you going to do with that? Sort of pilot data, that knowledge that the, the, for some reason women want to engage with this twice as much as, as do men. What are you going to do with that? So it was really, and the first thing I did was look up the number of people in those age groups uh, that are registered on Facebook. Cause I was thinking, is it just that there's more women on Facebook? Is, is it that split? But it's pretty even, it's, it's slightly more women. Um, so there is kind of some skew to that. Um, but uh, yeah, not, not enough to kind of account for what I saw. So, um, it's, it's something that I, is really interesting taking it forward for any time we do this again. And I, and I don't know how we're going to be presenting this kind of public engagement again in the future. I don't know if it'll be face-to-face -face or if it'll be digital. 
Um, but it's something that it would be really interesting to now speak to, now that I've got the time to speak to more people who did engage with it and ask what it was that made them click on it, what it was that maybe made them skim over it. Was it uh, something about the, uh, the kind of sweet little animation they, or was it something that was in the way it was presented? So it's definitely really interesting. <laughs> Um, and I, uh, on, interesting on Twitter, it was shared by, um, in the few shares that I saw were mostly men. Um, but I don't know if that's just because of the audience that saw it at the time or how it was presented. So it's definitely something I want to look into, but I'm, I'm going to have to speak to some people and find out exactly what it was that made them click on it in the first place. <laughs> You, you probably with, with a health psychologist hat on you probably do want to speak to a health psychologist okay. because they're the kind of people it's a strange thing health psychologist isn't they don't do what you think they do what they do is they're the people that uh, go away and um, prepare uh, public service announcements and leaflets and things like that that, that you used to as you're sitting there in the doctor's surgery there all those leaflets will have been designed by a health psychologist um and for me they might be able to provide some in i just just because you've clearly already thought about it because you went and looked at the data so i yeah I, you've, you've well and truly covered the answer i'm just thinking beyond this is what you could do with that because it's a terribly intriguing because why is it what do health so what, what could a health psychologist bring to that as, as as some kind of pointing towards an answer but for me that that astounding work i think there is some evidence that um women engage with things that that you know, look and smell a bit like healthcare and improving. Um, kind of, so there's, I think the evidence is they're sort of more willing to take on new ideas around that their, their healthcare. Um, Cause I think this has been picked up in other projects as well. And I think the general response to increase engagement among men is to um, do so by stealth. <laughs> so kind of, and, and it might be something you can play around with. Um, so making your tweets or your Facebook post kind of really not about the liver, but maybe actually about that thing about the, you know, the, I bet you don't know the sort of competition thing. I bet you don't know how much sugar is in, um, you know, X, Y, or Z. And I wonder if that might change it a little bit that, that you've done some, and it's really nice, got a really clear idea that you're going and saying, I bet you didn't know how cool your liver is and how much stuff it's doing. And so that's a really, that was a clear message. But I wonder if focusing it like that is one of the things that made men go, oh, is this healthcare? No, thank you. That's yeah. not for me. That's really interesting, actually. Um, and it could be, um, yeah, some of the responses we saw to some of the kind of posts, which was just a picture of um, the scale of the sugar going, how much sugar is this showing? Is it, is it a this or is it a this? And twisting it like that could be an interesting way to, like you say, that kind of competition side of it, rather than my, uh, like, it is definitely very jumping around and here's this wonderful little, little let me tell you all about it. So it's kind of probably not stealthy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that could be a really cool way of, if it um, gets picked up in a different way. Um, and I wanted to ask as well a little bit more about um, what were your drivers in in how you developed the project so um what why video why animated video um and what was it about that that you thought would work really well and as a, and a kind of follow-on question and is there anything specific about the project that you think you'd do differently um if you were going to repeat it yeah um so the the video came from um the idea that I didn't want it to, because I wanted this it's to kind of give a this liver's really cool and it's really amazing what I didn't want to do was just here's a list of reasons why <laughs> so I thought um I looked at a lot of different kind of I started off with infographic and then I kind of lent it to animated infographic and I went through and tried a lot of different platforms and when I found Biteable there's this go this go it's actually a robot this gorgeous little robot that conveniently looked kind of like a liver um, and I looked through the animations and I saw it like fighting things and lifting things and cleaning things and I just thought that's the, the perfect kind of way to represent this really high energy hard working organ that kind of keeps up this oh, is that an amazing kind of feel that I was trying to go for um, 
so uh, that's kind of how it ended up at Bicycle, just through trying it a few different platforms. And when I found this, it, it just seemed to fit really nicely. Um, and uh, I think kind of if I was going to do it differently, one of the things that I would like to do in hindsight is spend more time building up the kind of brand with it. So it was almost accidental, this looking after your little brand that happened. Um, and it was one of those, oh, I'll share it on Facebook. I want it to come from somewhere kind of reliable. I don't want it to just to come from me. I'm a personal page. So then through building that up and it was, oh, okay, I'll, I'll take a screenshot from the video that can be a profile picture. And as it went, it became something that I actually had somebody contact me, um, a colleague and say, I didn't realize it was you that was running that. I'd, I'd seen this as something separate. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I was pretty, <laughs> um, so uh, that kind of, it was only as it was happening, I saw how effective it was to, to build that looking after your liver brand. And, and then again, as people started to like the page and follow the page, I was thinking if, I, if I'd done this earlier, I could have got a further reach and kind of built up to that big, if I'd have, rather than posting original video and then posting prompts, I could have done it the other way, which was use the little snippets of information and little snapshots and quiz questions to kind of gain a following and then for, towards the end of it, put the, the kind of big post quiz thing. Um, so if I was going to do it again, I'd definitely stick with that kind of building up of it more than uh, just it kind of falling into the <laughs> into the brand that it did. I think that's really good, Joe. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean, you say do it again, but is there anything to stop you actually re continuing this brand? Is there anything that prevents you from, um, you know, keeping uh, looking after your liver going, uh, you might not be able to access all the quiz and all that sort of stuff. But have you thought about how you could maybe repurpose the videos for things like the Great Science Share or other platforms where you've got a global audience that people actually want to hear about their liver um, in such such a, a lovely, lovely, cute way? <laughs> um, I think there's a, there's a great way of, of doing that sort of stuff. I'm, I'm loving the fact that you've thought about the branding because these small small kernels of ideas actually grow into to be much, much bigger things because that's the, we are we, we live in a global platform even more so when we're not going to work. Actually, I've, I've been seeing more of people from across the country and around the world than I have <laughs> than I would normally do in, in my office. Um, so have, have you thought about what you want to do next? Because I'm uh, gathering from your enthusiasm that that wasn't it and you've drawn a line under it and it's done and <laughs> it's finished. No, absolutely. And, I, and I've learned so much as well. Like, again, Leah was so much help throughout this because face-to-face -face public engagement is something I've, I've got experience with, but doing it digitally was so out of my comfort zone. Um, even social media using is, is pretty out of my comfort zone. So um, I've learned so much of this and I was actually amazed at how people responded to it so and obviously I've fallen in love with this little this little robot liver um and so now that the pages are there I've, I was thinking towards the end of it especially when it it got the positive response that it did that I'd love to keep it going um so I definitely won't be getting rid of it um and public Good. engagement is something that I um am really passionate about and I, I try and do as as much as I can so it's something that I think, especially, I mean, who knows what's ahead of us regarding how we're going to be doing public engagement, but um, there's, uh, you know, for all these times I did do the sugar board face-to-face, -face, is this now something that I can do, at, like you say, at online events or at festivals, when we would have been standing there with, with the board in front of us, is this something that I can kind of, like you say, keep as a brand and, and build upon so that I can introduce it into these events where I would have been in there in person um and i mean there's i i barely touched on all of the wonderful things i ever did it's got 500 jobs so it could keep me in public engagement uh <laughs> videos for a while um but yeah i i definitely have no intention of, of closing the pages it's just now how i can kind of keep adding little things to it that meant that you know when something like this an opportunity does like this does come around again i can have something ready and just go that ah, right here's something that I've built that we can easily slot into those uh, opportunities when they come. Well, I, I, don't, I, don't, yeah. I don't think we'll be going back to face-to-face -to -face interactions for mm. quite some time uh, in reality. Um, so I, I would expect you to be 
quite busy in in continuing that on as well. So it, yeah, you've done a, you've done a great job there, and I'd like to see much more of this as well um, because I think you've done an outstanding job. Um, what about you though? Talking of, aside from your liver, one final question: What about your profile, and what has this done for your profile? Um, so it's I uh, use Twitter a, a little. Um, and uh, it's predominantly for, for work. It's kind of more for the, the science Twitter. It's, it's amazing how much amazing science I've found on Twitter. Um, and um, the feedback has been really great. And I had a couple of, I hadn't intended initially to link my name to it as such. I, I was sharing it through the Looking After Your Lover brand. Um, and I hadn't really intended it to be something with my name on it. Uh, but a friend shared it and credited me and then that got shared by more people who credited me and that kind of resulted in um, me kind of making connections on, on Twitter and things like that, that I wouldn't have made before and it was really nice to have that kind of, um, it came back to me in a way I wasn't expecting it to really, but it's um, something that I think I'd after seeing how powerful this has been, I'll definitely be paying more attention to and being more active with, I think, because it's one of those things I was more of a watcher than a poster. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's, it's been some brilliant stuff that uh, I've, I've had feedback with this. So it's definitely, I think, something that um, I'll be engaging in more. <laughs> good, good. If, yeah, if, I look, yeah. I'm yeah, looking I forward would... to the top 10 jobs videos. <laughs> yeah, I start, would start ticking be... off the 500. Yeah, I would certainly be including this in my portfolio of work. Yeah, I, I would be vastly proud um, to include that work, that piece of work that you've done. I would be really, really proud to include it in my portfolio, and you should be too. Thank Seriously. you very much. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, it's been really, it's been uh, fantastic actually to see. Um, obviously, it's been a, a really different challenge this year for the whole cohort, um, and actually. I think it's, I hope it's been more valuable in that you've come away with something tangible where you might have tended towards a different type of engagement and maybe tended towards doing an event. And, and actually, I think it's, it's really brilliant to see that each of you has a thing that, you know, nobody can take that away from you. It's your thing. And I think that's been um, really brilliant, actually. I can honestly say I absolutely would never have done anything online if this hadn't happened this way. Yeah. Stayed completely in this comfort zone and done what I stood there and did an event. But I've I've loved this so much and I've learned. I can't believe how much I've learned from it in the few months I've been doing it. And again, you've been so helpful, Leah. Thank you so much. No um, I've, I've I feel like I've got a whole skill set that I didn't have a few months ago, which is really nice. And I definitely want to. Uh, I've I've kind of seen a little into the door now of, of how much there is here, and now I'm really keen to to build on it because I've seeing how far it had gone in just a few days is um, really great. So I'm going to be uh, adding to that little portfolio. I think. Yeah. Yes. And make, <laughs> that, and make that portfolio public, make sure that everybody can see it. That becomes your brand. It becomes the kind of thing that you take with you wherever you go, wherever you go post-docking or lecturing or whatever. It's something that you point to and you go, see that, that was me. All right. This is my evidence of being an engaged researcher. I love that. Just one question though. How many people did you think that you were going to reach? Um, I, I had I, not that many. <laughs> um, I, I didn't really know if I'm a hundred percent honest, it was hard to gauge as, a, as something I've never done before. Um, I'll be a hundred percent. I didn't think that many people would take the time to do the quiz. Um, I was surprised that nearly 50 people did it and I can't even credit it all just being my family because uh, they uh, were kind of doing it in the before stage so I, I couldn't even uh, just say oh, mom everywhere and it, it was all mom's friends but no um, it, I was surprised at how many people had taken time to do it all the way through. Um, I definitely wasn't expecting to be seen in many countries as it was that was really cool um, just to think that purely by it could be you know one degree of separation away but one share from my post by somebody on on my personal facebook meant that it got this far um so yeah it, it was more than i thought but i can also completely honestly say i i didn't really know 
how much traction it was going to get. Um, but I'm, I'm really happy with how many people did engage with it. And more importantly, how many of those people said they learned something. Um, and I'd hope that, you know, with the amount of liver researchers that I know that at least a couple of them would have said that they hadn't learned anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, <laughs> hopefully uh, that was a couple of people. But um, yeah, of, of the people that did reach, it was really great to see that people actually took something from it. So that was really nice. But I think it is, it's testament yeah. to the, the, the really clear planning that you did. And I thought that was really interesting um, about how you then uh, ended up using Biteable and, go and, and, and doing the project the way that you did, that that's actually with engagement. We, we sometimes find it really hard to say, well, what can I do? This you know, big open list of millions of things that could be, be my engagement project. Um, but because you had that really clear idea of this is kind of how it's got to feel, that then once you had gone through and found the right thing, you knew straight away. So I think that's the that's exactly what, how we like to see these things come together. You've got the clear plan that enables you to make the most of a good opportunity or something, you know, a, a, bit, a bit of serendipity in how you come across something. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that was, that was really good. Well, we've let you run over on time. So we will let you off the hook and let you go now. <laughs> I told you I wanted to hear more of this. I, I, even I got excited. <laughs> I've so, delayed your dinner long enough. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. And as I said, I'll circulate any more feedback and any more questions and anything like that. Um, and then we might just put in like a five, 10 minute little catch up if there's any particular other questions from other panel members. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you. Thank you again, honestly. It, it was <laughs> so brilliant I've, and I've learned yeah. so much. And thank you as well. Like the feedback's been really great. <laughs> brilliant. No, no worries at all. Credit to you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Right. Take care. Yeah. Good Bye. to see you. Bye. Bye. Bye.